Welcome back to For Your Child's Health. Our guests today are Dr. Karen Hardy, and joining us now is Dr. Beate Illick, Associate Staff Scientist. We're talking about pulmonary respiratory conditions. Earlier we were talking about asthma. Dr. Illick, you've been dealing with something called cystic fibrosis for 10 years. We've heard about cystic fibrosis, but what is it? So cystic fibrosis is also a pulmonary disease, uh, but it also has symptoms uh, that affect the pancreas and the intestine. And it's actually a genetic disease, and that's a, a real difference to asthma. So there is a, an underlying genetic defect, and that defective gene has to be inherited from actually both parents. Okay, and these children that have it, I mean, what are they actually experiencing? Because I, I know it's not just the breathing. I mean, they have stomach problems. They have it's just a a bunch of different ailments that seem to show up. That's right, so the disease originally was called cystic fibrosis of the pancreas. So it started out uh, with the symptoms in the pancreas that were observed and then it also was noticed that the lungs actually are uh, severely affected and they are building up that mucus that uh, blocks the lungs when, from getting air into it. And so these are the major symptoms that the, these patients deal these days. D Dr. Hardy, I mean, what's the difference, we were talking about asthma earlier, what's the difference between these, these two? Or are they uh -huh really similar? No, they're quite different actually. So cystic fibrosis, as you've heard, is genetic, but that gene controls the production of a protein that should allow salt to move in your body. And when salts don't move correctly, water doesn't move correctly either. So the, the primary secretions that they make in their airways and in their gut throughout their intestine are different. And they're too thick and they tend to clog those organs so that they have repeated infections in the lung, so they have some of the same sensations of shortness of breath as an asthma patient. But because their pancreas is clogged, they can't get their digestive juices out, so they can't digest their food. They suffer horribly from gas pains and from maldigestion. So they have very smelly, fatty stool, mm -hmm. and they can't gain weight. So they can eat voraciously, but still not grow and they were usually diagnosed because of their growth problems or their breathing problems. Well, this is something, obviously, I know there's a lot of research in both areas, but in terms of cystic fibrosis, you and your, your husband are a team, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Fisher, and, and you've made some headway. Talk to me about some of the discoveries. We've been talking about all this, you know, frightening, scary stuff for parents. So we've been working uh, on cystic fibrosis since the gene was basically discovered, and that's 20 years ago. The gene has been identified, and it was identified uh, to function as a chloride ion channel. And so uh, Dr. Fisher, he is an expert in uh, looking at the single gating of these chloride ion channels, how they let the chloride through. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we started to look at if there are other anions that could go through that uh, chloride ion channel, and it turned out it is bicarbonate. And the bicarbonate anion is actually important to regulate the pH, the acidity of mm -hmm. the airways. And so now it turns out that this um, regulatory pathway is important to fight off bacteria. So our latest research showed that there is a defense mechanism that uh, is not functioning well in cystic fibrosis patients. So are we talking about being able to cure it after it's, it's manifested itself? Are we talking about genetically sort of removing it before a child ever is born to experience it, or both? We're talking about both, but I think we have to take one step at a time, and, and what we can do is at the moment is probably fight these specific symptoms that are off. And for example, if the pH is off in the airways of, the, uh, of these cystic fibrosis kids, we are looking now for ways to correct this defect of the pH, for example. And so we are just f trying to find ways to uh, get the pH less acidic. In now, Dr. Kids. Hardy, you do some research too, really briefly. Is, is it similar, going along the same lines? Well, I'm a clinician, so I actually take care of these patients, mm -hmm. and my job is to make sure that we're doing the very best we can with everything that's available right now to do all of those things for all of our patients. So okay. we're very keen to follow national guidelines to be sure that every visit they're supposed to have, all the things they're supposed to understand, all the treatments they sure. should be doing are really being managed. Well, I, you know, it's one thing to talk about these diseases and quite another mm -hmm. to experience them firsthand. And we're going to introduce you to a set of twins who actually live with cystic fibrosis. Meet Marcus and Michael. Blow, blow, blow. Young squeeze, Marcus squeeze, Russell push, Greer push, has been push, fighting push, for push, air since the very beginning. <gasps> awesome. We all take breathing for granted. These kids sure don't. No, they don't. Big breath. Blow it out far. If I cough, that means I'm out of breath. He suffers from cystic fibrosis. My son was diagnosed when he was nine months old. With, as a young mother, that, with that kind of set some alarms off, I imagine. Yeah. So what did what, you do? I just 
took it and treated it. And big and deep, big, 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 all the way, all the way. Boy! Then Marcus's twin sister, Michael, was also diagnosed with the same thing, a respiratory problem that can be deadly. Oh, it's genetic. It, ha it, ha it runs in both parents. Have to have the genes in order for you to have a kid with CF. And then your chances of having more kids with CF is one in four of your kids will have CF. Did you know that you even had it in your family? No. I'd never even heard of it. My mother's a nurse. It's also something that twins must live with every day. In the past year, they have had a couple of setbacks and needed more antibiotics and had a little more infections. So he's doing pretty good. Because we got sick. We got sick. And because, like, sometimes we didn't take our treatments. Without the treatments, their young bodies overproduce thick and sticky mucus, but this machine with the long tubes and special vest give the twins a fighting chance. Coffee, because it gets the mucus out. Oh, that really jiggled, huh? Plus, they take cool. quizzes to try and understand the respiratory condition and how to live with it. And 100% for Marcos, yay! We're working on that by uh, teaching them more about their disease so they can take more responsibility and to do their treatments more frequently so that they can have a little extra airway clearance and stay out of the hospital. Ready? Right now, big and deep, big, big, blow it up. Good, blow, blow, all the way, all the way. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Big breath in. Wow. Very good, Marcos. You know, breathing is something that we do take for granted, and these kids really have to work at it. That vest is something. Is it they each get one of those and that what, just really briefly, what, what does the vest actually do yeah. for them? Did you get to try it on? <laughs> no, it scares me. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting experience. The vest is a machine that vibrates very rapidly, so it causes high frequency compressions on the chest. The kids wear a jacket, it's hooked up to a big machine that's uh, very expensive actually, and it, sure, yeah. it shakes in order to move mucus from the periphery, from the smaller airways toward the right. central airway so the child can cough it out more easily. Well, and that or different techniques are used to clear the secretions. Whatever it is, is working very nicely for them. For more information uh, about the topics that we're covering today or to support Children's Hospital Oakland, go to childrenshospitaloakland.org or call 510-428-3043. When we come back, we'll have more uh, to talk about uh, with the doctors about cystic fibrosis, asthma, all the breathing disorders. But first, we're going to see how you can help shield your children from secondhand smoke. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lucy Day, director of the Children's Hospital Oakland Hall of Health. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the U.S. A big problem for children is that secondhand smoke is dangerous, too. You can empower children to stay away from secondhand smoke. If there's a smoker in the house who isn't likely to quit soon, designate the children's rooms as non-smoking areas. Give them permission to play outside or in another room if someone is smoking. And remember that it's illegal to smoke with a child or teenager in the car. To learn more about the body and what you can do to stay healthy, bring your child to visit the Children's Hospital Oakland Hall of Health. 